Well, hello, ladies, gentlemen, and whoever or whatever you identify as. Welcome back to the Shit and Dread. Welcome to another video. Right then, <laughs> this one's going to be fun. And the goggles are going to be put on for this article. And I'm going to read the title to you now. Which you've probably got a clue from the thumbnail, but... Written by Sam Pierce for the CosmicCircus.com. Um, well, here we go. In defence of Christian Mulzira of <laughs> Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> right then, let's read through this and yeah, let's uh, Now that we're coming to the end of Joe DeWitzka's run as the 13th Doctor, thank fuck for that. I thought it might be time to really give this era the props it deserves. Okay, in my opinion, the 13th Doctor era of the show has been quite good, solid, and despite some some neg some negative audience reception. Some some good solid Really? Honest? Right, let's carry on. To give you some of my background on the subject matter before we go any further, I've been a long time Doctor Who f for the last 12 years. I've watched the classic series in its entirety, by the course of missing episodes. Well, yeah. Clever. I've read a vast quality of Who novels and I've listened to a variety of big finish audio plays. To sum it up, I'm a super fan. Okay, fair enough. The least is honest. On one hand, I understand why the 13th Doctor era has been so controversial. People being upset about the Times Child story arc. It's like slightly being upset, is it? It's completely destroyed the whole cabin of the show! That's slightly upset. Fucking angry! For instance, it's understandable. Hmm. But overall, I believe, uh, but overall, that Chris Chibnall, Jodie Whittaker and the rest of the cast and crew delivered us a pretty solid batch of episodes and ones that I will, I will likely re-watch with great fondness in future years. And you... Will probably be the only ones. 13's era feels like a return to Doctor Who's roots. Really? Okay. Back in the 60s, when the show was first premiered, Doctor Who was marketed as an educational family show. The episodes were alternate between sci fi episodes set far in the future that taught about some scientific concept and historical episodes that taught the different about real historical time period. Okay, well, that's a fairly accurate statement while obviously the messaging style and tone of the series shifted greatly over the next six decades the spirit of exploring bizarre planets encountering historical figures fostering a sense of wonder and optimism about the universe remained fairly constant then till this episode these series of shows come in and then it just turned into a shower of shit written by fucking idiots i love the way i sit on the fence all the time i need to work on that at the time that Stephen Moffat era was going, roughly 2014 to 16, I was in the middle of my classic Who watch as though, as well, and I was surprised that despite the questionable special effects and general com campiness, I found myself more drawn to the narratives of the story that was telling back in the 70s and 80s than the current ongoing episodes. The vast majority of us do exactly the same thing. To me, Doctor Who was about the sense of exploration and optimism about the universe, not saving the entire cosmos for some new nonsense threat every other episode. So, what changed? Because that's exactly what you've just had for the three seasons of Jodie Whittaker. Except they were badly written. In fact, awfully written. Any case, let's carry on because at the moment I'm trying to figure out where he's going with this. For that reason, Series 11 was a massive breath of fresh air. Barring one or two weaker episodes, cough, cough, arachnids in the UK. One or two. Really? Is that what you thought? Hmm. I actually found myself quite impressed by the overall quality of the season. Really? Okay, visually, yeah, but everything else? No. No way. Each episode felt straightforward, actually enjoyable, and retained that original spirit of the show from way back in the 60s. No, it didn't. Sorry, mate, I have to disagree with you massively there. The one in the 60s would have episodes over four, and it would make logical sense, and it wouldn't be rushed at the end with some... Plot point and McGuffin rubbish. This is nowhere near the quality of the 60s. But no matter what you think, sorry, mate, you're entitled to your opinion, and that's fine, but you're wrong. Massively wrong, but I shall continue. There was an excellent blend of space exploration, was there? And historical facts. The ghost monument, with its strange and hostile setting to Rosa, oh was generally a heartfelt tribute to Rosa Parks. No, it wasn't. It didn't do anything for Rosa Parks at all, really. It 
it was terrible. To Kablam, with its parody of the Amazon Corporation, the episode felt entertaining and yet had a genuine heart. Woof. Really? I'm sorry, mate, but... Pff, no. And when the season finale, the Battle of Roshnach Ak Kolos, rolled around, there was no huge universe-ending threat. No, that's the one that he even admitted that he rushed and wasn't very happy with the script and everything was last minute. And you think that's good, even when Chris Chibnall himself saying he wasn't really happy with that. Just fighting another monster in space, which, after a number of long, convoluted and confusing season finales, was honestly very comforting. It wasn't. It was pointless and shit. Jesus Christ. On top of that, I really liked Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor. No one else did. That's why it's gone down, down, down and down. She has stamped zero personality on it. She does a poor cosplay of Matt Smith and David Tennant. There is nothing that you could say... Apart from that dumb, stupid, scrunchy face that she did all the time. Oh, and the massive over-reliance on the sonic screwdriver. There's nothing in the performance that you will ever be able to point your finger and say, that is Jodie Whittaker's Doctor. Because it never happened. And she also spends a lot of the time in the episodes actually not being the key character. So you're wrong there. I'm sorry, but you are. Of course, leading in series 12, the tone of the season shifted a little. There was a bit more darkness and edge. The season had a few more weak entries to offer, most notably the Dreadful Orphan 55 and the Dull Praxis, both of which were patronising people, telling us about the way that we were destroying the planet and if we don't change it, blah, blah, de blah, 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 blah. Don't need to know that shit, thank you very much. We're already aware of it. But, but other than those, I found myself enjoying most of these episodes very thoroughly. Okay, that season, of course, was all building up to the resolution of the timeless child story arc which was which has been largely disliked by fans no hated not disliked hated fill people with anger just you've literally destroyed the show and if it was building up to the resol resolution of the timeless child story arc that arc hasn't been resolved at all not one bit so I'm sorry, I don't know what you're building up to what resolution. It's never been resoluted. It's it's just continually it's there and it's going to fuck up history. And for a lot of people, unless it's ret retconned and ignored or something's done to get rid of it, people won't come back. The Timeless Child was the straw that broke many, many people's backs. And they won't come back. Until, unless there's a guarantee that that sack of poisonous shit isn't revoked. Timeless Child, you could see when the Timeless Child come in, the drop downward increased. Increased exponentially, where the very last one before this centenary special, on the night, in the 24 hours of its release, only got 2.2 million viewers in the UK. And it bombed in the US. So there's no resolution to the Timeless Child arc at all. I have a slightly different take on the subject, though. Well, that doesn't surprise me. The Timeless Child is actually pretty good. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, I'll admit, I'm not sure why Chris Chibnall chose an attempt to rewrite the canon and the lore of Doctor Who, other than as an excuse to incorporate the Morbius Doctors into canon, which it didn't. We all know why Chris Chibnall wanted to do it. It was to get rid of the white male influence from the Doctor. Period. That's why it was done. And it was also done to shit all over Canon because he just wanted to fuck up Doctor Who. That's his legacy. That's his history. That's what he'll be remembered for. Nothing else. But I don't really think this is a big revelation. It's nearly as atrocious as some people seem to think. Yes, it is. But we'll continue. One of the primary concerns I've heard of the story arc is that it disrespects Willow Hartnell's legacy as the first Doctor. I've never really understood this take. William Hartnell still played the first Doctor, even from an in-universe perspective. Although the incarnation existed before him, presumably Doctor's memories were erased by the division between the first Doctor and his previous incarnation. Therefore, he truly believed himself to be the first Doctor. His decisions are personated, or he's entirely his own, and not predestined. No, bollocks, mate. He was the first Doctor, because that's what he was written as. 
the first doctor. Yeah, they would never know 50 years later that some complete dickhead would come up and fuck all that up just so he could be remembered for doing something in his life. This points to another criticism here a lot, that the Chinese child implies the Doctor is somehow this mythical chosen one, even more than they already were apparently, and it takes away some of the agency of power from the character. But yet again, I would argue, up to this point, the Doctor believed their life began with the first Doctor, and therefore their choices to steal the dark TARDIS, to run away and see the universe were entirely their own choices, not influenced by any previous Doctors. Again, wrong, you're missing the point. The problem with the Thomas Child is it completely destroys anything and everything to do with the Doctor. It now makes the Doctor a completely immortal being. There is no peril anymore in Doctor Who because the Doctor can die over and over and over and over again with no fucking problem whatsoever. It didn't influence him at all or anything else. It was done that way and then Chris Chibnall come along and decided that that wasn't good enough simply to erase the white maleness out of the Doctor. That was it. That was his legacy. Fucking... And ultimately, I think the Thomas Child plot twist can lead to some more positive, positive stuff in the future. It opens up the show to a lot more storytelling possibilities. Absolutely funny and not reminding the fact that it's been fine for the last 50 fucking years. Doesn't need anything else. But in any case... Depending on the route that the future showrunners go. For example, where does the Doctor truly come from? Gallifrey, you fuckwit. That's where he comes from. That's another reason why the Thomas Child is a sack of shit. What are the adventures of previous Doctors unseen be like? We don't care because we got it from number one. They don't need any more. Jesus Christ. What are the adventures... Oh, no, sorry. There is a whole universe of possibilities that have been opened up by this story. Um, well, yeah, I suppose in one respect you're right, but except the fact, of course, it shits all over the last 50 years that have gone before it. But, of course, that doesn't matter, does it? Because you think it's great, even though the vast majority of people don't, and that's why Doctor Who is in the fucking gutter right now. And again, I admit this revolution does conflict with a lot of the established canon. No, it destroys it. It doesn't conflict with it. It eliminates it. You know, remember the speech I'm 900 and some years off. The, from, gone. All gone because of that prick. And it's interesting how the messiness of the law gets de were dealt with the next era of the show. However, Doctor Who has always been messed with canon. And if fans of the 60s, 70s and 80s got over it, modern fans can look past it too. There was slight ones not one that specifically went out of its way to erase the white maleness out of the doctor and completely change who the doctor is but what about flux ah flux well i'm well aware flux feels more like a moffaty rest of the chibnall era season-long universe threatening art returns of the weeping angels flux feels much like story art that moffat could have written no, well, it might have maybe written it a little bit better. But in any case, I actually enjoyed the flux pretty well. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was good for what it was. No, it wasn't. It was shit. There was a lot of it that, well, yeah, people, they were just because just they were. Plot lines. Things forgotten. It's just shit. Considering it was filmed during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, I did appreciate the return of a lot of old villains. You know, the ones that right at the beginning that Chris Chibnall swore blind he would never go back to, but had to, to try and entice people to come and watch the show. Even the episode with the Weeping Angels was still shit and pointless. Introduction of new characters and the fact that it felt appropriately epic final series, finale, final season for 13. No, it didn't. It was just... Oh, and then, of course... We'll, we'll just get on to the fact before we go any further um, that the fact that, um, well, in any case, anyway, of course, a number of plot threads were left unresolved. Yeah, for instance, isn't a lot of the universe destroyed right now? Yeah. And in Sea Devils, not mentioned. In any of the specials, not mentioned. Not addressed. Not corrected. There are loads and loads and loads of plot threads that you've left. You know why? Because they're shit writers. They just cobbled together some sack of crap and tried to write it off as a brilliant series when it wasn't let's remember talking frog on a chair for a fucking start hopefully these issues will be addressed in the centenary special this year really 
Do you know how much? I mean, we've we've thrown every villain that we can do in it. We've brought back past, you know, past um, companions. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. All this in just over an hour. I'm guaranteeing you now it won't fucking be solved. I bet you it's not even fucking mentioned. Oh, God, excuse me. Hiccups. Utter bollocks. Overall, though, Flux is imperfect. But again, I still find it to be a thoroughly enjoyable season of Who. Well, I'm glad for you. I'm happy, honestly happy for you that you could actually sit and watch that shit more than twice. Some of us have watched it once. And that's another thing with this. You say it's a memorable era. You can remember episodes and eras from all the other Who's. This one, apart from a few things where she's been preaching and insulting single fathers, for an instance, which was very poignant and close to my heart and really fucking angered me because I was a single father and portraying men as pointless when we're fucking not. But in any case, it's not memorable in the slightest. In five years' time, people have forgotten, completely, almost completely forgotten about Jodie Whittaker and this era because it's that pointless and un unrememberable. It just... Yeah, even when you're watching the show and you're trying to use to do reviews, which I used to do on the original Gobby Guy before I had to delete it, um, you struggle to remember what's actually happened in a fucking episode. It just... Out your head, because it just doesn't stick. Yeah, you can remember an episode like Tom Baker's episode, like yesterday. Looking forward to Doctor Who's future... Despite some negative public reception of the 13, some, some. Remember that you started at 18.8 .8 million and it dropped to 2.2 .2 million. That's a 16 million loss. It's not some. That's a fucking load of people. And most of them, you ain't going to get back. I find myself very hopeful for the future of Doctor Who. Mm, okay. I'm excited as anyone for the next Russell T. Davis era. We're all sitting there, fingers crossed, holding our breath, hoping everything works out. We'll have to wait and see. The original RTD era is one of my absolute favourites of the whole series. I'm looking forward to see what RTD and Shooty Gatwa <coughs> excuse me, choose to do with the character. As we excitedly brace ourselves for shining new of the greatest show in the galaxy. Okay. I hope it's, it used to be. It isn't anymore. It's a pale shadow of what it used to be. I hope that the contribution that Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker have made to this bloody show will not be pushed aside and forgotten by fans. It already is. No one's interested in the centenary special. Everybody's concerned at the 60th. It's like, oh, look, hey, we've, we've got a sense of show. Shh, 60th. But we... You, you, yeah, David, David Tennant um, and everybody... You, you, sh, 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 go away. In fact, it's gone. They're not even advertising the fact that it's happening. It's all the 60th. Russell T. Davis and, and Doctor Who's 60th anniversary is everywhere on social media. And there is diddly squat for the centenary special that no one no more cares about. I reckon it's only going to get probably 2 million watching it when it does come out. Because people are not interested at all. To me, 13's run was enjoyable. A feel-good return to the roots of the show. It fucking wasn't. Shedding the over-the-top drama of the Moffat era, Chibnall created an era of the show that was fun, wondrous, and thoroughly enjoyable for me. And hopefully many other fans of the show. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was like watching a car crash in slow motion. It was horrible to watch the show fall apart. And the viewing figures back that up. Pure and simple. People have turned off and they aren't going to come back in their droves. And a lot of people's sticking point will be the timeless child. Any case, I shall finish it off. I hope in the future to see plenty of comics, novels and audio plays set during this either of Doctor Who. I hope not. Well, they have done. They've done one the Doctor Who redacted and no fuckers listening to that, really. It's a pointless podcast. I don't think it is. In fact, the last time I checked, it wasn't even the top 20 podcasts. So, no. So we get to spend more time with 13. No, Yaz, no, Ryan, no, Ryan, Dan, no, I don't want any of them. I don't want any of them at all. And I appreciate their characters more. No. Well, Yaz has nothing to do with them. No, just no. And I hope more than anything, one day, even the most hardcore Hoovians will look back on this era show with love and fondness they already have for it. Sorry, mate, to burst your bubble, but they fucking won't. In fact, a lot of us just can't wait for it to disappear completely 
And when the centenary special's done, we never have to utter that stupid fucking thing again. I mean, I admire... I admire your opinion. I respect your opinion. It's wrong. It's flawed. But it's your opinion. And there are a few people, and I mean only a tiny few people, who probably agree with you. And you know what? That's absolutely fine. I mean, I mean I'm not having a go at you at all. Um, whatever you... What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Let's go all the way back. I'm not able to go at you, Sam. Not. You enjoyed it, and that's great. I'm, 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 I'm happy that you enjoyed it. But I'm afraid what you wrote there is rubbish, because people... It's no good. It's like a small amount. It's a massive amount. This, These three series and these things have, have just almost, just almost destroyed Doctor Who, reducing it to a pile of nothingness. I respect your point of view, mate, but you're wrong. And to say that the Thomas Child is a good... It just isn't. But in any case, what would I know? I'm just a fat bloke sitting in my shed surrounded by my toys. Let me know what you think. Comment section down below. You know what to do. You know the rules. You know the regulations. Just don't get stupid and RC and we'll be fine. If you enjoyed this uh, particular video, then give it a thumbs up. There he goes. Is There we go. Very helpful there. Old Dave the Hand. If you want to see more videos like this, then you can just hit the subscribe button. It's located just there, right there in the corner. Hover over there. It'll come up. Little subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Done. If you do that, because I forget to keep mentioning this, do hit the bell. If you hit the bell, then you should get a notification that I've done another video from YouTube. But that doesn't always happen because they keep turning it off. And I've had many of my current subscribers telling me I didn't know about that video because the, the bell had been turned off. So check it if you are subscribed and if you are subscribed thank you so much it's so much appreciated you really need to... oh. and with that and as always and until the next one ladies and gentlemen i'm going to love you and leave you thank you so much for your time it's always much appreciated